We're here at the sold out show for Zilla Kami and Sos Mula. And it was a wild day today. We saw backstage shenanigans and we saw what it's like to be a rapper that's selling out a tour. Big dogs gotta eat, hats, shirts on the site. If you want one, I'd love to send you one. Zilla Kami and Sos Mula make up New York's rap group City More. They are known for their wild, in your face mix of trap, rap, grunge, punk, and metal. At their shows, you can expect mosh pits galore, high energy, and movement. Today, we explore what it's like to be on tour with them at their sold out show in Milwaukee. Nice awesome. to meet you. I'm, I'm Tommy. Hello. I'm Halo. How you doing? Tommy, what up? What oh, up, pretty. Wow. Hi. Thank you. How you doing? Mia. Hi, I'm Halo. You yeah. are pretty. He's a pretty boy. That's the first time I heard that in a long time. Really? Good to see you, man. Bring the bear of bad news. No weed in house. Smoke it on the ramp. <laughs> Wait, so the kilo I have in my backpack has got to go? Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> okay. I totally forgot your name already. It's Ralph. Ralph? What do you do? OnlyFans is how I made my first million. Hi, so. I'm a collaborator on OnlyFans. Are you, you like, really? Yes, I am. I was on yeah. the top five for a while, but I don't think I am anymore. So my channel is HIV based, if you've ever done anything like that. You have HIV? That's my OnlyFans channel, it's HIV plus. No, I'm just kidding. My name is Tommy G and I do little documentaries and whatnot. Okay, I was yeah. like, um... I have one dollar bill and I'm willing to give it up for a show. Guys, I'm getting married in October, so I gotta so kind of... you can't be a stripper. No, oh, I had to retire. Yeah. You should have a stripper-themed wedding. We're having a spooky October wedding. Oh my god, that's awesome. Yeah. That's now, sir, were you have intense music? Took off the porch when I was 13. Ah. Selling crack when I was 14. I've never gone on a drive-by, but when I listen to some of your music, I'm, I'm like, I think I might do it. You know what I mean? Sure. Do you have any sort of ritual before you go on stage? Just drink, smoke, might do some M. So you get f***ed up before you hit the stage. You're pretty f***ed up. All of my cars are too sick. All of my watches hit risk. Hey, get no tell y'all cover up. I have clothes on. But sir, free the nipple. It's a campaign. Yeah. What? You want to see my Free the nipple. It's like oh, I got my heart-shaped oh, nipples. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. See no nipples. But my nipples are cool as fuck. I don't get it. They're hard. Damn. I don't want to see. Okay, can you show us your nipples? I just want to see the pool. No way. Oh, you are hot. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. So did I. <laughs> so what is the best thing about being on tour and what's the worst thing about being on tour? Because I feel like a lot of people think, oh, if I'm a rapper touring, it's the best thing ever. But living in a hotel, being on the road all the time, that would be tough. It's tough on your body. It's tough on your mind. Bro, not laying in your bed for like months is literally one of the most depressing things that you can do. Yeah. What are your favorite hobbies? What do you like to do when you're not on tour or just to take up time when you are? Boy Thai. What else? Uh... Guys, for those that don't know, this guy is a Golden Gloves boxer. He does Muay Thai. He's trained in Thailand multiple times, right? Fucking savage, right? It's like fighting. Like fighting. Yeah. When did you start fighting? I was eight. It was boxing. And then I, I wrestled like a tiny bit in high school. Gang gang. I was super like into it. And then I just stopped wrestling because I thought it was a little gay. What do you think now, though? <laughs> I still think wrestling is a little bit gay. Why, dude? I feel like it's the most dominant martial art. If a wrestler's fighting a boxer, Muay Thai, kickboxer, whatever, a wrestler usually wins. They usually win, but it's either like they win in like a very boring fashion or they get knocked out in a spectacular fashion. Okay, so I'll definitely give you this. Strikers are way more entertaining to watch fight, but grapplers win the fight. What makes you smile? I don't know anymore. I do read a lot. I don't know, man. I, I don't really have fun anymore, you know? It's a lot of work. So do you feel like you've gotten to a point in your career where you've experienced everything, you've tasted everything, and there almost is nothing left to enjoy? Literally yesterday I said in the car, I was like, what do you do after you did everything? You don't know. Like, you don't know what you're going to do anymore. What is the next chapter? But then even then, it's like, who cares about money if I've already did everything? Hmm. Have you gone on like a vision quest before? Yeah, that was like the whole Thailand trip. I was there for like two and a half months. I want to see if like I was like really a fighter. That's really what like the journey was. What's a fighter? Am I really a fighter? Am I really a warrior? Because you don't really know. What did you learn about yourself in Thailand? I learned that I'm way more savage than I thought. Like, Fuck yeah. You hit like the threshold. Every day it was breaking a threshold. You're not supposed to be there. You're literally a tourist. And they treat you as such. Monty, what is it like being on tour? It's great. Do you enjoy being on the road? Yes, I do. Because it's the people that I work with. If it wasn't the people that I work with, I wouldn't do it. How do you feel when you're back at home? Are you itching to get back on the road? Um, or do you like the solitude of being I back? my life. So I like to be by myself when I'm by myself. Because when I'm around people, I'm with people all. Day. What's the most you've ever made in a night stripping? Oh, three grand. I made three grand my first Friday. Was that exhilarating? It was ecstatic. I really didn't give a f I was dirt broke at the fucking time. You might be wondering, if you're a touring artist, where do you shit backstage? I want to take you on a tour of the bathroom. First, in this luxurious tile room, where as you're getting ready to hit the stage, if you need to take a poop, this is where you would go. Let's check out the washroom. 
Is that the luxury you're expecting? I don't know. Let's check out more of this place. The impression I have so far is maybe it's not as glamorous as you would think to be a rapper. And also I think we think, oh, if you're a famous rapper, there's no problems, there's nothing to worry about. As you can tell by talking to him, problems never leave you in life. I don't care if you're Jeff Bezos or living in a tin shack or you're Zillikami or you got one follower on SoundCloud. Life is difficult and always finds a way to trip you up. It's like a trial. We're here for a trial, a test, a journey. And no matter who you are, I think we should have sympathy for each other, knowing that life is a struggle. How are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? Oh, yeah. You excited yeah. for tonight? Fuck yeah, dude. What's your style when you go to a concert? Moshing for sure. Yeah? yeah? You go hard in the paint? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love you guys. Thank you. Well, what is it like being a cameraman on tour? You must catch some absolutely unbelievable things on camera. Yeah, I mean, their shows are great for sure. Yeah. Mosh pits. We all gonna come to the middle. We gonna go fucking crazy. <laughs> Rap in general is nothing like City More. It's yeah. fucking crazy, man. How'd you get your foot in the door with them? I made a fan made video. Have you ever seen Arson? <laughs> I saw the Arson vid I did. On Instagram, I think I tagged them, and then like the next day, I was meeting with P, Zilla's brother, and it was just on from there. But I think that's a cool thing, is because shooters take shots, right? You took a shot at it, and it paid off, and now yeah. this is your career, dude. Like, how cool is Definitely, that? Yeah, crazy. All right, we're like 45 minutes away from you going on stage, and you're eating chicken wings and tacos. How do you like your body to feel? Like, what's your pregame ritual here? I don't care. You a mosh? You know, if you have chicken wings bouncing around your body, you'll just go for it. Yeah. It's, I didn't eat the whole day, so gotta get a little sum, man. Protein. Ooh, a little protein. Um, okay. And is there anything, like, any signature move, like, when you go on stage, like, I gotta get at least one of these in, like, a crowd surf, or you touch a titty, or anything crazy, like? Not really. I used to have cool ones, but they all end in injuries, so you can what, what was an example of that? The boner stands. No. <laughs> the boner pogo stick. The, you didn't see this one. Yeah, <laughs> boner push-ups. Have you ever had to stop a show and be like, that guy needs CPR? Every fucking show, right? Backstage at a rap for a rapper. What kind of magic potion do they have? They got crystal head, vodka for the creative spirit. They got a little bit of pineapple juice, some waters. We have some chicken wings. We've pretty much devoured everything here. Some tacos, which what was your review on the tacos, sir? Horrible. One star or two star? It's a zero, it's a zero. What about the wings? About well, four out of five. That's pretty solid. Sir, your review on the Milwaukee food, tacos, wings? Uh, I haven't had the wings. The tacos are like a six. I don't think they're that bad. He's about to start lying. <laughs> the wings uh -huh. don't look that good. The wings don't look that good? Uh, nah, I like them crispy. Crispy? Nah. All right, sir, sir, sir. Your take on the tacos and the wings. Tacos first, please. Tacos are terrible. What? Wings? The wings are very, uh, very good. Very girthy? No. <laughs> no. I'm gonna have to start back my rap career, dude. I fucking. What's up, everybody? You motherfucking idiots. Let's go. Woo! Are you gonna stage dive over the pit into the crowd? What do you think? Should I? Yeah, hell yeah. Should I stage dive? I'm only allowing it if you do it with the camera in your hands. Doesn't that sound like a dumb idea, though, Mr. Zillikami? Yeah, so it's a City More concert. Yes, sir. It's a City More concert. They're doing a show. That sounds fucking stupid. Oh yeah, it's sold out. A lot of people came here to be stupid. Hey, let's just say, let's just say, people out there, if you don't have some respect for City Morgue, they sold the fucking place out. So put some respect on his name, on the, wherever the social mula is, alright? Two times. Two times. Alright? One more time, we can, sign the, we can sign the pool. And you can't even sell one subscription on your OnlyFans, bitch. Look at this <laughs> shit. Yeah, ill views. <laughs> you <getting> bitch. <laughs> Two shows out was Jeffrey Dahmer in 1989. <laughs> oh, I would go to that. If he was around, I would go to that show for sure. We have a lot in common, <laughs> me and him. When you look at Jeffrey Dahmer, you and Jeffrey Dahmer's life, how do they intersect? I call him Jeff. If I was about 45, I would have been like, yeah, Jeff, you're a cool guy, but I'm not going to your house, man. Your take on Jeffrey Dahmer, sir. He's a legendary scary person. Do you feel like you guys have met a serial killer before? Yeah, I'm a serial killer. You never know. You never know. You don't feel like you would know? Uh, they act normal. So you could be one. Definitely can. Because he refused to call Wayne's girthy, which is a sure sign of a serial killer. Like, that's number one on the list. If you saw a serial killer, do you think you would know? Or do you think they would fool you? 
It depends on where you live. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, son. If you're in Wisconsin, I think you would know by like their, just their aura. You you can tell when people are weird. Have if you're you in the hood, you don't know, cause then like a serial killer could be your best friend. He just shoots people, and nobody calls him a serial killer. It's a different type. Like, okay, I get people that are shooters, but people that like kill you and then fuck your body. That's a little bit different than a shooter. A lot of a lot of serial killers who got racked up a couple bodies that weren't doing nothing to the bodies. They were just killing them. If they weren't shooting people and they were stabbing people, what does that make you a serial killer now? You know. I guess that's a good question. We must ponder the definition. Ponder Give us three long. hours of pondering, and we'll come back to you. So a lot of a rap show is waiting around for it to happen. They were in Milwaukee since yesterday. It's a lot of waiting. So I think people think, oh, that must be the most glamorous lifestyle. I'm sure there are perks. There are some pretty fine young ladies here. You get to perform in front of an audience. But I don't know if I could do this day after day. It would be very tough. I think it would be very tough. I was doing some thinking. I think being on tour would be tough. So if you had to choose another profession, anything in the world, what would you choose? Um... I don't know. No, that's hard. Probably like a fighter. Probably like a Muay Thai fighter. And then like right after, right after you're done, you become a coach. So like you still get to. Do so you run your own gym, have a stable of fighters. Yeah, it's like that's like what you want to do. Have you yeah. ever had a real job? Nah, not on papers. I never had a paper job. Yeah. What What did you? The first way you made money? How'd you do it? With mowing lawns and shoveling snow. Me too. Yeah. The great, great. And how long did you do that for? A long time. Cause those days, you know, I lived in Long Island. We we got snow. There was days where I would literally, me and my friend Jeff, would make like five hundred dollars each. Go Why are door we to door to door? If we could do this in one night. Did you go straight from your lawn mowing career to your rap career? Yeah, you can actually say that. Yeah, it's a lawn mower to rapping. That's gangsters, fuck, dude. Had to get some push-ups in before we hit the stage. Then I discovered that everything was in slow-mo. We don't have any audio from this point out. Tried to super soak the crowd. Slipped. What a nerd. About to do the worst stage I've ever seen at a Zillikami concert. Look, big air, big air. Start off good, but boom. No one to catch me. Here's me in the crowd. But we did capture some badass moments. Here they are. At this point, it's 10 p.m., which is about my bedtime. So I head out, I hug Sosmula, compliment him on his performance, give Zillikami a fist bump and a hug, and I head out. For the extended version, hit the Patreon. Otherwise, enjoy this brief bonus clip of an interview with a not stripper. Can I interview you? First question, what is the coolest thing that you have done in your career? I think one of the coolest things I've done is I broke the Kia Boy story, which has taken over the nation. It's been insane. I have people calling me from Seattle, Minneapolis, all over the country talking about the Kia Boys. What what is a moment in your career where you were literally shitting your pants and you were like, I want to go the fuck home? When we went on to O Block with my dear friend Brandon Buckingham, who got me into O Block with him, and he's the reason why I'm here today. We got in there and there's a bunch of teenagers, face masks, guns, and people are yelling. There was just an altercation. You know when the block's hot and you feel like yeah. it's gonna go down? Yeah, the block is And then they, hot. I get lost easily. I'm directionally challenged. Okay. So they, they, they took us deeper and deeper into this place. I didn't know how to get out. I'm just like, we're gonna get fucking robbed by 15 year old kids with guns. I'm not feeling it, but it ended up being a very good experience. Good. I dropped some sus bars for them, you know, and they were feeling it. Mm -hmm. Well, kind of feeling it. 